So when you first look at this puzzle, there are a couple things that stand out. One thing that stands out to me is that this, this is probably set by a human constructor. And, and the reason you can tell this is there are lots of patterns in this puzzle you can see. For instance, this 159 in this diagonal is repeated down here in this diagonal. Indeed, in the center, you can fill in the missing digit. There's a 159 there as well. On the upper right, there's a 236478. You see that again in the center and in the lower left, all in the same place. So someone has copied those digits specifically into those locations. And the only other digits are these two ones and these two sixes, and you see that they have their own symmetry. So if we put a, a dividing line down this diagonal, there's a, a lot of interesting symmetry in just the givens that you see in the puzzle. When you make progress in a puzzle, keep attention of any digit you place. It probably gives you your next digit. So we're going to use this five, this five come over here, place a five over there. Now, I also said that we could just look in this box for progress. And indeed, uh, what, what I see is that there are fours that come over that put a four in one of those two squares. And you say, well, this doesn't do much. Well, this tells you that the four isn't in this top row. And whenever you place these notes, it's useful to use the notes and come across. And so now we actually have only one place in the second box to put a digit. If we follow that down, now we actually have an either or case. You know, this is a four and a six in some combination. And so we can try to use that. And now we're getting towards the end of the puzzle, which is when digits are going to fall real fast. And what happens is you'll start writing one digit, and you're going to keep writing that digit other places. And sometimes you'll pick up the trail with something else, but you're going to keep using that digit then as you go around. So for instance, up here, uh, we're missing an 8 and a 9. We still need to place other 9s. Typically, the digits you're missing are the ones you have to keep placing elsewhere. And we see we can finally get that 3. We're going to write another 3, which gives us a 9, which gives us a 9, which gives us a 7. You write another 7. This gives you another 7. Now we're going to look up here. We have a 4. We just wrote a 4. We probably need another 4 somewhere, a 6, a 6, another 3. And what's true is that as you finish a puzzle, you'll oftentimes have these cases where this 4 gives this 4, gives this 6, gives this 6. And so what you keep in mind is when you write one number, look across to where that number is going to go somewhere else. And you're going to get this trickle of a domino effect where you can write the digits much faster if you keep in mind what you last wrote. And so that's how you'd go about solving this puzzle.